Welcome to Chasm Workspaces. This video will walk you through the Workspaces user interface and provide a general overview of the platform. From the login page, you will have the option to log in with your username and password or an external single sign-on or multi-factor authentication provider if you have one configured. After login, you will be presented with the Workspaces launcher page, displaying your available applications, remote browsers, and desktops. You will see images that have been pre-installed by your Workspaces admin. They may have added custom images, such as administrator departments or job titles for certain images. Also, under the Tags button at the top, you will see different categories like desktops that it can be filtered, or you can search via the magnifying glass next to the tag icon. Here, you can see I have preset an accounting section and an engineering section. Under the accounting section, I will go ahead and deploy a desktop. This desktop has been configured with persistent profiles, a persistent profile means that your home directory and all files and folders within it are saved when your desktop is destroyed. Most applications such as Linux desktops and browsers store user data in the home profile. This means that your data will be saved when a session is destroyed and available when relaunching a session. Workspaces with persistent profiles enabled will display a drop-down menu from the Workspaces launcher allowing you to enable, disable, or reset your persistent profile. Disabling means the session you create will not have any of your files on it, and any changes you make during the session will not persist. Resetting your profile will permanently remove all data from your saved profile upon launching the desktop. Now we will launch a workspace session and learn more about the control panel. The control panel can be found on the left-hand side of the screen while in a workspace. The control panel minimizes when not in use and can be restored by clicking on the arrow. The control panel defines the interactivity between your local host and the remote workspace. The items within the control panel are defined by your administrator, so some of the features may not be available for use within your account. Starting at the top, you can see Enable and Disable Audio Output. Next, you'll see the microphone access. This allows you to connect your microphone to the remote workspace through your browser. The first time you enable your microphone, your browser will prompt you to allow Chasm to access your local microphone. The clipboard control allows you to manually copy text to and from the remote session. This panel is only necessary if you are using Safari or Firefox from your local computer to access Chasm. Chromium-based browsers, such as Chrome, Brave, and Edge, support seamless binary clipboard, which means you can directly copy and paste text images and other content between your local and remote session. The next control is Downloads. If your Workspace Administrator has allowed it, you'll be able to download files from your Workspace's desktop to your local desktop. Here I have a text file that I have named chasm.txt, and I would like to open it locally. Merely copy it to the Downloads folder on your profile and it'll appear in the Downloads panel. Click on the file and download it locally. Now you can open it on your local computer. Likewise, the Uploads panel can be used to transfer files from your local computer to the Workspace's desktop. The Streaming Quality setting allows you to adjust the quality depending upon your network conditions. In order to simplify settings, Chasm Workspaces provides a range of preset qualities that can be used to easily control the rendering quality. These range from static to extreme. Users that require a finer control over streaming quality can use the advanced settings that can be found by toggling the advanced dropdown available when a medium or higher quality is chosen. These settings allow for you to choose your scaling mode, set your FPS, and even toggle on and off performance stats. If enabled by your administrator, the sharing feature allows you to invite others to your session through a web link, which provides a view-only stream of your workspace session, along with a chat interface for collaboration. Next is a new advanced settings tab that allows for local cursor, showing keyboard controls, IME input, game mode, and a pointer lock. Below the advanced settings, you will find a control for switching to full screen mode, which eliminates the remote session browser navigation bar. Clicking the button to return to the Workspaces launcher docks your current session and allows you to create other sessions or resume existing sessions. This is also where you can be interactive with the active sessions, including pause, stop, and the deletion of a session. Finally, I can log out or delete the current session. If you log out or leave the session without deleting it, the session will continue to run idle until exceeding the administrator-defined timeout length. The home profile located here is where files persist between sessions. In addition, your administrator may set up file shares. In my case, the shares are located under shares on the file system. Your desktop may come with a browser. On this desktop, I have Firefox and Chrome available. Your administrator may filter access to the internet. 
For example, my administrator filters access to sites categorized as auction sites. If I go to eBay, I will get this block page informing me that the access to the website is not allowed. Your desktop will likely come with an Office application. The default Chasm desktop images come with OnlyOffice, a Microsoft competitor. With similar feature sets and capabilities, OnlyOffice has fully featured document spreadsheet and presentation applications and is compatible with Microsoft Office formats. Chasm workspaces can also be used for browser isolation. With browser isolation, users are not provided direct access to the internet. Instead, a remote browser is rendered inside your local browser, and you only see a rendering of the internet. This ensures that no harmful malware can infect your local system and keep sensitive data from being leaked out to the internet. If seamless browser isolation is configured, you'll use the internet like you normally would. Some sites you'll be allowed to get to directly. In this case, I'm able to access Google, while accessing other sites will result in you getting redirected to a Chasm session, where the original URL you requested will be rendered inside the remote browser. Chasm also has a browser extension, which can be installed on your local Chrome or Firefox browser. This allows you to right-click on links and open in a Chasm session. The video description will include a link to the Chrome and Firefox browser extensions so that you can easily add them to your browser. Here, you can see I've Googled for sketchy websites. I probably want to open this up inside a Chasm browser to make sure that I don't infect my local system. Indeed, if the website is sketchy, we should probably delete the Chasm session. Whether you're using Chasm workspaces for a full remote desktop, browser isolation, or general application streaming, the concepts of security and remote work are the same. While it may look like an application running directly on your local system, it is only a rendering of the remote workload and your administrator determines what information is allowed to transfer between the local and the remote system. This allows you to work unimpeded while keeping your administrator's secure and sensitive data safe.